Hello friends and welcome back to another episode. Today's topic is not very sexy, but it's one we need to discuss and it's really to aid you when you're on the hunt for a good use 35mm film camera, especially the Japanese variety, and it can get kind of confusing with batteries. So today's episode is really just on batteries. And again, it's not a very sexy topic, but it's, I hope you will find it useful if, uh, if you need, if need be. Okay, so let's talk about the, the batteries here. So what it is, is there's one battery that operates. It's the cornerstone for, for the entire spectrum, okay? So they're in multiples. So it's 1.5 volts, then 3 volts, and 6 volts. So here's, here's how it works. So right now you have, uh, my personal favorite is like the Renata. It's a Swiss company, and their batteries are silver. But uh, in the next, I'm going to wipe this board clean after this topic, and then I'm going to show you dis discharge cycles and why you want to go with silver. But just for right now, just roll with me here. It's a company called Renata, and they make the SMC357, or just basically the 357 battery. Okay, and it replaces all these. So if you open up your owner's manual for whatever camera you're going to get, uh, it'll just probably list one of these, an LR44, CR44, SR44, 357, okay, and you can see A76, PX76, so forth and so on, okay? But the main thing to realize is that the, it's really the, the letters aren't, I'll explain the letters in a minute, but mostly it's the numbers. So you have the 44 style battery, 357 style battery, the 76 style battery, and these are the most common. It's a 1.5 volt battery, and the camera that uses this is the Pentax K1000. It's used in almost every photography program, right? So if you go to a community college or a university, they want to teach you fully manual. They want you to learn fully manual. So the two cameras that really come to mind for fully manual are the Pentax K1000 and the Nikon, basically the FM2, to me. I mean, because it's post like 1982-ish, so it's a relatively new camera. Okay, so those are your fully manual cameras. But the Pentax K1000, and I'll come around the camera here and I'll show you. This is what the, the battery looks like. If I can get some autofocus. A little bit too close. Okay, there we go. And I had, yeah, 357. And you can see the, it's a, uh, I think it's 0.457 inches in diameter. It's R44W, okay? So a battery this small, it basically serves one function and one function only. It's to power the light meter, okay? It can't, it doesn't have enough juice really to power the shutter. So if you have a camera like the FE2, the Nikon FE2, it has a battery powered shutter. So again, a, a, a battery, single battery, this small, is generally just to power the light meter inside the camera, okay? Now we move up, that's 1.3. Now let's move up to the three volt. This is now the, the like the, the Duracell DL1, it looks like a fraction, one over three in. It's three volts and it replaces or is compatible with a one third, anything with one third. Now, I didn't list them all out here because I just wanted to see, these are all variations on a theme and you can see here basically it's the same thing. So it's one third. 2L76, the 1108, and the 5008. Now here's what the 2 is. This is why I have the 2 here. The 2 in front of the battery means 2, like 2x two or 2 times. So you can take this battery and you quite literally stack two of them right together, two on top of each other, and that makes your 3 volts. 2L76 means 2, 2L76s two or 2357s. You stack them together in the in the battery compartment, and it makes up your three volts. So this is for a camera, generally. So the ones that use this are the Nikon FM2, the FE2, the F3, and the Olympus X700. They all use this one third, and I'll show you this battery now. I'll come behind the camera. So this is the battery, the Duracell one third N, and you can see the thickness. It's a, basically it's twice the thickness of this battery. It's the same battery, it's the same dimension, 0.457 inches across, okay, but it's taller. It's just twice as high, so that's why it's two, like two times, it's two times the L76, and again, this is basically the L, this replaces the L76, so it's two times that, three volts, okay? And now let's move to the 28L. 28L is a 6 volt, 
and it replaces the 2828 Alpha PX28 4LR44, okay? And the 2CR1 in. So again, so what that means is four times this battery. So in some cameras, you can literally stack four of these right on top of each other, because 1.5 times four is six volts. So you stack four, that means four of these batteries. Four of these batteries. Or the 2R1 third end means, quite literally, it's like stacking two of these together. Two, three volt, you arrive at your six volt battery. Okay? So again, that's why they're in multiples of one and a half. Okay? Two, one and a half, and this would be four, one and a half volt batteries. Okay, and the, the last one here, this six volt, is it takes the, it's the Canon A1, Canon AE1, and the AE1 program. So I'll come behind the camera and show you this this battery. And this is the Duracell 28L. Okay? So it looks, this one, now this is where it actually starts to, to turn and look more like a little miniature C battery, a C cell battery, or a little miniature D cell. Okay, so this is the the button the button style battery for like a watch or a hearing aid, the one here on the left. This is what you would normally find in like a, a, a wrist watch or a... Uh, a hearing aid, something of that nature, and then here, this looks, this is starting to depart and look more like a conventional disposable battery. Okay. So now this is why I have the numbers two and four. I already explained that. So two, the number two in front of the battery means two times whatever. Okay, and the number four would mean four times, like here, four L forty, uh, four L R forty four four 1.5 volt batteries. The ALL and the S, you know, this is a general guideline. This is not hard and firm across the board, but the A generally stands for alkaline, the L stands for lithium, and the S stands for silver oxide, okay? And I'll, uh, in the next one, in the next, I'm gonna clean this board again and I'll show you, I'll talk to you about discharge curves and which battery is best. But there is one other battery I didn't show you yet. It's the 625 Alpha. And I'll come come around. Now this is not this kind of departs the norm again, where this is not stackable in the in the in the in the terms of these other ones, right? Because this other one, these are all basically the same battery stack. Okay, the the 357, 130N, and the 28L are all of the same variety. One and a half, three volts, six volts. Okay, the same family of battery, but this one, the 625 Alpha is used by the Olympus OM1N and the lowercase or the, the small n basically means new so it's the, there's the OM1 and the OM1N and again I'm just for giggles the OM1N uses this one which is a complete departure from this chart okay so that's why I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that okay so we're talking about the types of batteries used in 35 millimeter film cameras okay so the types of batteries are silver oxide lithium and alkaline and what makes it important why to choose the, the certain style is a, its discharge rate or its discharge curve if you wanted to graph it it would be a discharge curve and that's what we've done here okay I've done here so a silver oxide battery it's a flat discharge cycle or curve which means it's constant until it hits about 90 percent of the battery's discharge and then it kind of tanks out okay now why that's important to have a flat discharge is for your light meter okay because of the meter inside the camera it's registering a certain scene and you want uh, repetition right you want that to be reliable from roll after roll after roll you want it to be reading the same amount of light so that you don't get different exposures over time your, your film isn't you know exposed by a third of a stop two thirds of a stop one stop it's going to be exposed throughout the life of the battery at the same rate Okay, and let's go to lithium. This is lithium manganese dioxide. Okay, there's another one, lithium sulfur dioxide, and it's it's got a flat discharge rate like silver oxide. But you mostly find that one in very commercial uh, environments, right? Like industry. Okay, and they're ex super super expensive, very expensive. So the mo the ones you'll find out for us consumers in in camera land are the lithium manganese dioxide. Okay, and what's good is it'll, it'll retain a flat discharge until about 50% of the battery is exhausted and then it starts going south. So it'll start getting some crazy readings in your light meter 
Okay, so what happens is, so when you get your film back, for the first 50% of the battery, your exposures are constant, but then now what's going to happen after 50% discharge is when you get your film back, you'll see it's exposed differently. You, you might think, wow, this is, it appears a little more overexposed than it did before, and that's why, because the battery is starting to go, and it requires more light to hit the, the photo element, light element, and then, of course, your, your photos are going to be overexposed. Okay, and alkaline is the worst. So you can see here the discharge rate or the discharge curve of alkaline. It starts losing power immediately and just continues to losing power. It's kind of, it's just a steady downward uh, slope for alkaline. So that means your photos are really going to start to vary on your exposure. So it's going to be very difficult to maintain any type of uh, uh, repetition from roll to roll to roll to roll, getting the proper exposure with alkaline. So alkaline should pretty much be discarded right off the bat. And again, the difference is here, the 28L, when I showed you this Dur Duracell 28L, the L is lithium. They also make a 28A, which is with alkaline. So the, it's the same battery, you can use it in the same camera. So say for example, this is the one for the Canon A1, Canon AE1, and Canon AE1 program. Now if you use, if you buy the 28A, that's alkaline. The A stands for alkaline, and you're going to get pretty bad results for the most part, you can get bad results in your exposures. But if you go with the 28L, it's the same battery. I mean, for the most, I mean, the form factor, the camera will still use the 28L, but now you're using lithium, and roll to roll, your exposures will be much more. Uh, you can replicate, right? And that's what you want in photography. You want to replicate, and roll to roll to roll, instead of a lot of variance in your exposures. Okay. And again, but the best one, it's a pretty flat output until 90% and then it tanks out is your silver oxide. So you might be thinking, well, how do I, how do I know when I'm within my 90%? And generally, if you're an occasional shooter, what I would recommend is treat it like a, a family smoke detector, right? So you'd want to replace the batteries in your camera at the same time as you replace the batteries in your house. So if you do it once per year on your birthday, the smoke detector, also do that for your camera battery. Just, you know, take a coin, you know, unscrew that little compartment, and just throw in a new battery and you're good to go. You'll probably never hit 90% as long as you do it once per year, okay? In your roll to roll to roll, you'll be dead on. Bam, bam, bam. And here's what's important too, especially if you're going to be new to film. It's, you know, there's a steep learning curve to, sometimes to, to when you get into something new. There's a learning curve and you have to be really super patient throughout this learning curve. And what you really need is, 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 a, is, a, is a, a noob, you need repetition. So can you imagine the frustration you would experience as a new film photographer? You're trying to learn aperture, you're trying to learn shutter, okay? Because ISO really, ISO is not really a physical element of the, of the photo. The camera only understands aperture and shutter, okay? We use ISO as kind of a, for the internal meter, only to, to measure reflected light back into the camera, but it's truly not a part of the exposure, just shutter and aperture, okay? But we use it though, again, to get a correct exposure. It's kind of elemental, unless we're using Sunny 16, then ISO doesn't even play a factor in the camera. Like your old TLRs, there is no meter in those very old TLRs. So again, the camera only understood shutter and aperture, and we use Sunny 16 to set the, the, the controls on the camera. Aperture and shutter, we use Sunny 16. So my point is, can you imagine the frustration as a new photographer? You're trying to learn photography. You've got an alkaline battery in your camera, and your, 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 your exposures aren't constant. They keep changing. They might keep getting brighter and overexposed, overexposed. And that's going to lead you to frustration, and you might abandon photography. You might think, you know what? I just don't have the knack for this. I'm getting frustrated. I'll just stick with digital. And the fact is, you could be on. You could be doing a, a very good job, but this alkaline battery is leading you astray and you can't get any replication from roll to roll to roll to roll. Again, so your greatest aid is somebody who's new to photography and you want to measure. So you, you take some photos, again, you use a notebook. You make a note. I do that still. Frame one, shutter and aperture, light conditions, okay? And then when you get your film back from the lab, you look at the image and look at your exposure. How did you expose the image? And you can tell Okay, if it came back overexposed, you look at, okay, I need to fix that. If it came back underexposed, I need to fix that. And this will help you if you use 
the silver oxide battery because you're getting repetition and you're getting this feedback loop. So every time you fill, send a, a roll of film off to the lab and you get it back, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process improvement, right? You're learning and you're constantly adjusting. From iteration to iteration, you're learning and you're improving. That's why it's critical, and I mean this sincerely, it's critical as a new, as a new photographer to film to use a silver oxide battery. Because if not, if you were to use alkaline, you're going to throw in the towel early. You say, I don't have the knack for this, I'm not getting it, I'm done, right? And that's why we don't want to set you up for failure. We want to set you up for success. So please use the silver oxide battery. And I know I went long. I probably beat that to death. But again, that's why, you know, when you're new to something, if it's, there's the slightest little hiccup in there, it can throw you off course. It can cause you to quit. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful on batteries. If you're new to the the world of Japanese SLRs, okay, the old film cameras, and if you, I would ask you respectfully, please like like the video, click, give me a thumbs up, please, and also subscribe. I have many more videos coming on film, and I hope you will find them useful. And thank you very much.